Well, do we do we even bother saying what an amazing set anymore, or, or, it just, or, is, it, or is it manifest in our facial expressions? It, it just keeps happening, man. There's no let up going on. The quality of the music is just so amazing. I could hardly be happier. Yeah, and, unrelenting. Uh, you look pretty good for a guy who survived a wedding yesterday. Yeah, I, uh, I I have recuperative powers uh, still within me, um, okay. and uh, it's good to be back because because of a a lovely family wedding I took yesterday off, uh, and I almost inadvertently took the night before uh, the show before this off because of technical difficulties, but I did manage to jump on. So I'm really happy to be back in full effect with internet restored, and uh, my recuperative powers in effect. So. I'm happy to see you, Gary. Uh, and I just have to say before we go on, what a dang pleasure it is to be able to sit at home and watch this entire tour in such amazing quality. The camera work on this tour has just seems just particularly musical. Yes. The audio feed is spectacularly good. Somebody was complaining somewhere about not being able to hear O'Teal, but man. We got decent speakers here and I have no trouble hearing O'Teal. It's a wonderful. The spirit of the music is tremendous and the quality of the broadcast is beyond reproach. Yeah, and uh, I've been uh, tending toward headphones for very detailed listening and also because I'm a courteous apartment tenant. <laughs> don't want to, don't want to get myself evicted by blasting this music as it deserves but i'm hearing it in the phones and hearing every nuance uh and i agree the mix is fantastic and uh the band is uh, delivering music that you want the mix to be fantastic for because you want to hear every marvelous little bit we are here we being gary lambert and david gans uh doing this thing every night of the tour at the behest uh, and at the pleasure of nugs.net. And we love doing this. Uh, you may be watching this right now on the free preview of the second set that Nugs is offering. They offer a free preview of each set of each show. Uh, so those who are curious and uh, wondering if this is uh, worth dipping a toe into before taking the full plunge can check it out, uh, hear how the music is. And uh, we give this little halftime show as a bit of lanyap uh, where we bring in a different guest. But Nugs.net is presenting every show of the tour in glorious HD uh, and 4K video, uh, the fantastic sound we were just talking about. And uh, it also, we hope, will entice you to examine Nugs.net in general more clearly because it's an amazing service devoted to one of the things we love most in life, live music. Indeed. Um, I just almost lost my set list. Let me uh, t run down the set list we just heard before it runs away from me altogether. Um, because if you're watching this as the free preview of set two, you might want to know that if you sign up and buy the dang thing, you can watch set two live and then go back and watch set one almost immediately afterwards. And you also have two days to watch the whole thing all the way through a few more times if you're so inclined. Uh, tonight's first set began with Hell in a Bucket. We heard Sugary, Mississippi Half Step, Mr. Charlie, Friend of the Devil, and they always welcome Lost Sailor, Saint of Circumstance, and they close with Big Railroad Blues. I'm just, I, Lost Sailor is one of those songs I was so happy when it came into existence, so sorry when it left the Grape of Death's repertoire, and so delighted when it returned in recent years. And to hear that whole Lost Sailor, Saint of Circumstance thing is just a delight. Yeah, and just the pacing of these sets, the interesting song juxtapositions, uh, this is a band that's really been thinking about this music and, and figuring out new ways to permutate it and, and uh, surprise themselves with it a little bit. And I, and I really love that. that. That comes up in our conversation uh, with Jeff Cometti that you're going to see in a few minutes, that, that everyone right. is really on their game and on their toes, and you see it in the responsiveness. Uh, and you get to see it here on Nugs uh, because uh, they kind of invented this thing of, uh, of streaming a whole season's, a whole tour's worth of concerts. Um, and uh, you not only can just go back and see the start of the show, if you are, if you get totally hooked, you can purchase the entire tour and go all the way back to the forum in L.A. Hey, Gary, Gary, I'm going to interrupt you because okay. I just got a signal about uh, when the band's going to return. 
And uh, given the length of time that we spent with Jeff Comente getting a really fabulous interview, I want to make sure we get it all on. So okay. let's go let's directly that. to that now. I'm sure our boss, Brad, understands. We talked to Jeff Comente just a couple of days ago, and I think you'll appreciate this and enjoy it as much as we enjoyed doing it. And uh, we'll be back uh, for the City Field shows. Uh, and enjoy the rest of the night. Enjoy the interview with Jeff and uh, David all. See you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Lonnie, too. Well, if you've been following the Dead Co. Tour, as we definitely have been doing here, uh, there has been widespread agreement that everyone in the band is playing at the peak of their powers. And that is true for no one more than our guest. Please welcome our friend, Jeff Comenti. Hi, Hello, Jeff. Hi. Good. I, I, we ran out of superlatives fairly early in the tour. You guys have just been blazing across this country. And I've just, seriously, the music has just been so incredible. I could hardly be happier. And it sort of adds a little bittersweet overtone to the fact that this is the last Dead and Company tour. Well, I mean, that's, that's, the music has been great. And, um, you know, I don't know. I don't think, you know, anybody's taking a different approach being the final tour or whatever. We always try, you know, our artists and dandists to uh, put it out there. But, you know, things have definitely been clicking. So it's uh, taken it for what it is. And, you know. Uh, uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. Right. That's fine. I, my cat pulled my computer down in the middle of an interview last week, so that's nothing. <laughs> we, 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 we love a good action sequence in our videos. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Jeff, it, it really does feel like um, everyone is really in sync. The interrelationship between the players are really strong. Um, the way people respond off each other's ideas, uh, just that that telepathy and that empathy that you look for in this music is really happening. And it looks like you're enjoying it a great deal. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, then it's obviously been growing over the years and, you know, you, you, you learn people more and more as you go, even though you've known some of them for many, many years, you know, but, you know, just, you know, it's nice to know that the magic, you know, is always there to tap into and, you know, and just, um, <clears throat> just, you know, hopefully just keeps getting stronger as we're going, you know, it it's just been uh, amazing. I I could could hardly be more happy with the music you guys are making. It's just thrilling to see, and and just the all of you are at the peak of your powers. You know, everybody's pulling in the same direction, and it just it feels like the happiest, sweetest, kindest Dead and Company tour of them all. Well, I'll take your word on it. It's, uh... <laughs> Um, you know, one thing that I always look for in this music is for like everyone to be listening to one another, but also no one being afraid to assert a new idea, you know, throwing it out there and seeing how the others respond. And it seems like oh, yeah. you guys, you guys have a real capability for both surprising each other and responding to those surprises with another surprise. And Jeff, I got to say, there are a lot of places where you are initiating a lot of new ideas, leading the band into tunes with some uh, some piano uh, variations with the different voicings, with, uh, you know, playing a little theme that coalesces into a tune. And uh, it feels like the other guys trust you completely to take that role as well. And, you know, it's an honor to have that, you know, just, I'm just putting like, sometimes I'll just find the spot and like, hmm, let's we'll try a little something here, you know, and then, and they're responding, you know, and it's the same thing with the other guys doing something too, you know, but it's just, uh, <clears throat> you know, just, you put it out there and you try and, it was, and then you see what happens, you know, sometimes well, it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, then you move on or you stay there for a while. You well, know? I, everybody is such a good listener. And, and as we all know, uh, improvisational musicians, listening is as important as what you play and, and responding and being generous with each other is, is key to making it work so smoothly. That's the most important part, you know. Absolutely. Do you? I, I've been. I, I I love the Nugs Net feed because we get to watch the hands on the instruments so much and the faces. Like the camera work has just been ex extra specially musical this tour, it seems. And uh, I I noticed. Do you only play uh, like classic vintage instruments? You've got a Hammond organ. You've got a Fender Rhodes. You've got a grand piano. Do you play like any 
like synthesizers and stuff as well, or are you mostly playing the traditional instruments? Um, mostly everything's, uh, you know, actual acoustic instruments or, you know, vintage instruments or whatever. I mean, I will say that the piano is, uh, if you see in some of the, in the uh, nug shots, you can see little speakers inside the top of the, the piano there. So it's actually a digital piano. But <laughs> <laughs> the, only re- the only reason is that it actually it makes life a lot easier for everybody else rather than being one giant pickup yes uh, there's, there's no strings but there are hammers inside of it wow i had no idea that's yeah, amazing it, it sounds works. great well i mean it, it's it's just stereo out you know as opposed to like i said having like you know nine in- inputs or you know and having pickups or microphones in there and, and cause feedback and plus you know you don't have to you don't have to tune it <laughs> oh yeah, we 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 know very well. We've we've heard many many recordings of uh, uh, imperfectly mic'd pianos, so it's yeah. an obvious important an important solution to it. But uh, the, you know, the music is great, the sound is great, everything coming off the stage. I mean, we're getting these incredible live mixes over the Nugs feed. Gary can assert can uh, uh, attest to the amazingness of Derek's live mixes in the house. And presumably you guys can hear everything you need to on stage because the interactions are just magnificent. Yeah, no, I think we've got, you know, we got about the best uh, <clears throat> stuff available to us to, <laughs> to be able to hear each other. You know, and for myself personally, you know, I, I usually just use one uh, ear monitor and then I keep an open ear, you know, to the house because I like to get a little, I want to I wanna hear the audience. I want to, you know, I want to feel the energy that way and have the, have the open air, you know. Yeah. For me, if it's like, too, if it's too inside, it's 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 just, it's just too quick of uh, you know from reaction time from the from the instruments themselves, and then I and I feel closed off, you know, and I, I just don't like that feeling. So Derek has been, I mean, always does great, you know, but I just you know, he's get so many great comments and how the sound has been and over the years, and just you know, it's just people are loving it. So uh, hats off yeah. to him. Yeah, I, I make a practice of uh, when I go to some of the bigger shows like. Uh, uh, in Virginia with that huge lawn and uh, at Wrigley uh, I went up to the third deck there uh, I like to check out the sound in all parts of the venue and I I'm always happy to report back to Derek how good it sounds everywhere and he's always very well, satisfied to hear that that's very much considered in all placements and all that stuff and you know that's all thought thought about so I can't imagine what the stuff that he has to think about I mean honestly you know yeah I feel like oh, I got my one little job here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, you know, uh, solving the acoustical problem of Barton Hall, given how legendary that venue is in Grateful Dead history, uh, it also had a reputation as a terrible sounding place. Uh, and, and Derek had to do a lot of draperies and a lot of, you know, uh, conditioning the building to really sound, sound as great as it did on that night. Uh, and that was an incredible way. You didn't quite start the tour with that. Uh, you you uh, you had played Jazz Fest, but Barton Hall really seemed like a incredible launching for this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I feel like it was part of the tour, even though it was a, just you know some days separated in between. But that, that was, it was kind of an intense week, actually. You know, just you know, obviously we're us doing Jazz Fest for the first time, and you know, and, and the cancellations from the years prior, and we were finally there. You know, it just seemed like okay, we got we got two shows. Was, you know, we can do this. You know, but man, for me, it just like, like it was just kind of intense. It was, you know, I don't want to say like fresher, but it was just kind of like you know, like this is kind of a big to do. You know. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Jeff Comente rather than the sound system. What I, you've been doing amazing work with Wolf Bros as well, uh, but I'm wondering what else you do in your musical life, and, and you're going to have a little more time on your hands with Dead and Company no longer touring. Uh, what else do you do in your musical life? Yeah, I mean, since it's just been weird since the whole COVID thing. I mean, you know, I'm coming from the re-entry back into it. So I, you know, I was normally, you know, keeping busy with you know, Steve Kimmock doing side projects with him, some stuff with the Golden Gate Wingmen. Um, that just hasn't happened lately, but hopefully we'll get back to that. Um, just kind of feel it out you know but i you know i know the wolf brothers will probably be um, ramping up a bit more um, with the so i don't think bob's really gonna allow too much time on our hands <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bob, bobby's already made clear to me that he's got some big plans uh in the very near horizon uh right right after this thing wraps up but um well, as he told me he's, he says i'm on a mission 
Oh, he is. I, I, my wife and I were watching the show last night and we we're thinking this guy's 75 years old and he's just at the top of his game. His output is insanely good these days. It's unbelievable, you know. And I'm, I'm before I'm going, Jesus, how am I going to do this? You know? <laughs> You know, and that's and that's actually true of Mickey as well. Mickey's going to be yep. eighty next year, and he seems to be on an incredible creative peak. And I attribute some of that to the fact that both those guys are inexhaustibly musically curious. But I also attribute to the fact that the new energy that you guys have brought. To, I mean, it's not so new with you and Jake because you've been with Bobby for almost thirty years now. But uh, but you know, having a different generation of players, and especially having John with his orientation toward blues. And R and B and soul, and uh, having O'Teal with his incredible musical vocabulary, all of that informs what Dead and P Company has become, and uh, and and you hear it in the music, and you also see it in the way that the older guys respond to it. They want to be surprised, which is great. They're not like a, they're not like a band where oh yeah, make it sound like we did in 1967. You know, it's it's oh, who, yeah, no. who, who are we in this moment? Push it forward. That's what they're always after, you know. And just and speaking of, I mean, obviously, it's a unique package of of characters in the band, and um, and that's what I think what makes it work. But just yes, back to the energy of, of Bob and Mickey. I mean, it's just like it's. I mean, that's a big inspiration. I know for me, and I think the other fellows too, you know. But just seeing how into it these guys are, it's like it, it really, you know, feeds the fire, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, we're all bouncing off each other, but like I said, it's just you know it's it, it's pretty special. Yeah, yeah. the 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 way each of you completes each other's musical thoughts is really really fun. Particularly you and John handing stuff back and forth. But then O'Teal will just play a whole note in the middle of this thing that's like not the right, not the specific note in that song right and just take a whole new musical yeah. like a nice harmonic new setting for it and it, it's just a second going by but it just illuminates things in a new way and i love hearing that stuff yeah when he drops the reharm notes you know it's it you know it, it opens up a whole nother space and um and it, it's brilliant you know yeah. And I, there yeah. was just one particular moment last night. Sorry, Gary. I, I just want. There was one particular moment last night when things were moving back in the direction of Dark Star, and everything thinned out. It was just you and a drum, I think. And you were playing. It felt the the rhythmically it was Dark Star, but harmonically it was something else. And then you just the next bar was the same rhythm, but it was the Dark Star notes. It was just this perfect little transition that you managed back in a Dark Star. Well, we were, that, and I was actually I talking love that about song. Dark Star because it was, uh... <laughs> damn it, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, you yeah, know, because we were coming out of space, you know, and so, if I recall, and then it was just like, you know, we're finding, obviously, you know, we needed to get back there, but we found a different rhythmic thing happening maybe a little dip, you know, and leading into it and, and finally, but, but when the, the rhythm thing was happening, it, was, it created a whole different vibe to Dark Star from the traditional. And um, it almost like, and Jay, I think Jay for a second started to take it back to the original groove of Dark Star. And Bob like turned around, he went like, no, no, <laughs> keep going with the other thing. You know? <laughs> And as he told me on the side, he goes, "We don't, we, we, we weren't living there anymore. So it's like we're, we're <laughs> over here now, you know." And it was, uh, it was really great. I had, to, I had to give Bob kudos on that too. That's, was... that's great. And, and you know, uh, we had Don was on on one of our earlier, uh, actually on our radio show, and and he was talking about how Jay completely keeps him on his toes in Wolf Bros because Jay will play a song slightly differently each night. You know, he'll yeah. change he'll, he'll, he'll change the way he swings it or he'll change the way the groove works. And so it keeps everybody creating in the moment. And one thing I have to talk about, because to me, it's really the example of, of everything I love about this band. Um, you know, you're taking songs that David and I and Lots of Dead has been listening to for 50 plus years. And suddenly you'll say, I've never heard that chord voicing in this song before. So it, it changes our understanding and our perception of it. And to me, the absolute pinnacle example of that lately has been Cumberland Blues, which the Grateful Dead play pretty much the same way, beautifully, for the whole 30-year run. And those successor bands tended to stick to the arrangement. Uh, but there came a point, Cumberland Blues got moved into the second set, which was new in itself. Then it got moved to after drums. 
And something happened to that tune where they just, they opened it up and especially just let you run with it. And, you know, you're playing these sort of very jazz-like voicings and block chords and driving the music in a whole different way. And I, I said to a friend, so this is what it would have sounded like if Horace Silver had been in Merle Haggard and the Strangers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may just be because I don't know any better. You know, I'm just... <laughs> We hope you never do that. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'm, I'll stick with that. <laughs> and, and, that, and that reminds me of another question I have. Twice in the last week, uh, Bobby started the wrong song at one point, and last night um, John started Eyes of the World in the wrong place. And I could swear I heard a voice in the it's a, a mute. It was, it was somebody talking, saying something. Like, how would I have heard a voice saying something? I didn't understand it, but it seemed John seemed to hear somebody say, "No, no, no, not that." <laughs> do, do you know what I'm talking about? You're looking at him. <laughs> you, you're you're the guy who told them wrong song. How, why yeah. did I hear? Why did I hear your voice saying that? Did you say oh, it over the, the PA? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> just some leakage. <laughs> so I did. I did hear a human voice cautioning him. Oh, that's so good. And it was you. Yeah. Oh, I'm so they, glad. Actually, I and, thought his reaction was pretty priceless when he put the guitar down. He was yeah, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was it was it was not a subtle reaction, which I really appreciated. <laughs> oh, that's the, the, the you know the, the genuineness of it. That was, yeah. Uh, yeah, it happened. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, was, like, it was. It was. That's a lot of certain thing where it's like, you know, hey, we're going like, to happen a few days ago where we're going to we were going to input you know another song into the set because we were looking a little short, and then all of a sudden we just talked about it, and you went up there. And <laughs> Bob started it on the wrong song. That's the, <laughs> Uncle, uh, the Uncle John's Cumberland switcheroo, yeah. Exactly. So, but it, but it wound up working fine, and it was such genius for for to make the transition to Cumberland right after. How does the song go? And right. then the Cumberland like <laughs> that. that I, I laughed out loud at that one. Well, I mean, who can, you know, what other band? It's not many bands. I don't think they can get away with that in front of forty thousand people or whatever. Right. <laughs> We, we have been conditioned over the years to expect the unexpected and to wish for it, actually. So moments like that are precious because they indicate to us this truly is a real-time experience. Yeah, Even though it was absolutely. a misunderstanding over a pre-planned set list, it was well, still it, a real-time experience. Very last-minute kind of right. it was, for at least in a situation like that. It was right. Like, it was sharpied in. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> on the first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm thank you so much for solving that mystery for me. It's good to know you're the guy keeping the set list honest. Well, sometimes I miss it too, where I'm like, where, where are we? And it's like, <laughs> well, that's but, that's when you know. I mean, you don't really want to hold a candle to it because sometimes it's just like it could be the audible call. It could be like move next one. You know, so you just gotta be ready. Hey, if 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 the band isn't getting lost in the music a few times, you're not doing your job. So. And and, and, so, and so much of what happens is so perfectly telepathic up there that the occasional glitch just sort of helps keep it human. I agree. And a lot of times you don't have to say anything. You just give a look, you know, and right. you know, or you just play one note or something, you know, someone triggers something, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, OK, you know. Well, I really hate to say it, but we're running out of time here. We got another minute or so before we I'm have to so turn it back to. It's always fun to talk with you, man. It was great seeing you guys as well, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see each other in person very soon, all together. Yeah, well, I'll be uh, I'll be at City Field next, so uh, I'll be looking for you there, Jeff. And you know, uh, I really can't say enough about what your contribution to this music has meant to us from your early days in Rat Dog at, at today, and we look forward to what you're going to be doing next, man. That was very kind of you and uh, very honored to be a part of it. So much love from here, my brother. Thank you. Right, bro. Safe All travel. right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks.